want to call it. So, okay, I'll do the, um, the, you know, three days, three recipes, decisions, decisions, decisions. Does that sound good? Or do you yeah, think I should that mess great. it? Okay, then that's the one I'll post. I was even thinking, like, even halfway through, you can just be like, oh, I'm so excited. I, or I'm so happy that I bought all, ingredients for all five. I can still continue this even after. Oh. And I'm even like play off of it still being a, a lifestyle and not a fad. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's a great idea. Because I, I still, I use those, like I, I always eat my veggies, coconut steamed veggies. Like I incorporate all those in our dinners now, still. I love the stir fry veggies. Those yeah. Are my go-to. And the hummus and carrots. Like I live off that during the three day refresh. Yeah, that's what I, I bought hummus too. <laughs> the banana with peanut butter is really good. Like a dessert, like a frozen banana with a little peanut butter on it as one of the fats and the fruits together. If you don't want to put it in your shake and you want to eat it or something. Oh, that's a great idea. I could do that on Friday since I'm home. Yeah. See, I have to be careful just how good it tastes. <laughs> I get a little liberal. On... <laughs> Maybe it's a very heaping, overflowing half cup, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So how has everyone's week been? Crazy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very busy. Um, I'm right there with you. I feel like it's go, go, go. And now I have my daughter who really sick. Tonight, actually, she was the sickest she's been. So I don't know. I think we're going to be heading to the doctor tomorrow. So. Ew. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Hey, guys. Have, have a mom. Hey, Heather. Hey, let's go. So I haven't been able to keep up with all the messages going on, but there was something I think Marilyn you had mentioned you wanted to min speak about tonight. There's oh, I don't remember. Well, where did I go? Just there, I am. Sorry. Voices. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't win. Um, I can't remember. I know we were going to talk about, um, what is it? The book. Yes. I have not downloaded it yet. Um, so we were talking about, for those that don't know, we had mentioned just briefly in conversation and I need to still download it in audible, but doing a, like a book together from the national wake up call, they had mentioned. Finish. Finish. By John Aker. Yeah, mm -hmm. the book finished, and it was in the National Wake Up Call from this week. So um, I was thinking we could all do, well, actually, I didn't think of it, but um, I was definitely thinking of getting the book, but you guys <laughs> thought of all of us reading it together. So I thought that was a great idea. I have never experienced that book, so I would love to read that with you guys or listen to it, because that's what I'm going to do on Audible. <laughs> So if you want what is it called? Finish? Who? It's Finish by John Acuff. And that's A C U F F? Yes. I should go there now before I forget. Because I have a. Um, Oh my goodness. Credit. Finish. Um, has anybody listened to the wake up call? Yes. Good stuff. Yeah. Anybody not listen? Um, I have not. Was that which one was that from yesterday? Yeah. 
Well, both were good, I think, from, I listened to actually last week and this week's today, and both of them I thought were great. So I was a little late to listening to, just got my book. Yeah. Um, both were so good. So I definitely encourage you guys to go back and listen to those. Um, I thought the first one had a lot of good tips from a newer coach that is very successful in her business. And um, from what I remember, I've listened to so much PD today, y'all. So, um, <laughs> but that one was a really good one. And then um, Trina Gray was really, she's just awesome. So she had a lot of great words of wisdom. And I loved how. She talked about, and I'm, I'm going to mess up because I didn't write it down, the exact word she used. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, feel free to chime in. And Kay, how you've heard her live, so you probably know. Um, but at leadership, she had an aha moment that she spoke of that when you are speaking to the world, for example, her target audience, like you want to help people, but you really need to narrow it down. And she, I like the way she worded it, but um, basically keeping that brand in line. So for her, it is fitness professionals, fitness instructors that, you know, it's a lot on a fitness instructor to work 20 hours a week. And that's what she used to do. So this gives her this opportunity. She does not lead by the products, but she leads by the experience and the opportunity itself and what it can do for you as, for example, a fitness instructor. You don't have to work 20 hours a week of hard labor exercise in order to help people, but you're still in that industry that you love. Or if you are a, um, a mom, they mentioned, um, Hey Laura, hey. if you're a mom that used to be in the workforce, like you, you're a very, um, you know, like you're a graduate, a college graduate, you're educated. Um, and then you also want to be present in your kids lives. So there's a part of you that you feel like still wants to be in the workforce and have that, you know, thing to yourself while you have, you can be home with your kids. Then that's the audience you want to really focus your energy on talking to. Do you, does anybody remember from the wake up call exactly what she called that? There was like something she specifically said about that. A word. Like the, big, the big idea? Your yeah. big idea? That's it. <laughs> the big idea. So it's like you have a big idea. And so um, she talked about how she challenged her team on a Zoom just like this. So I thought we would do that on this one. And we would all share our big idea. She said it, it really, you can do it in five minutes. Like it can take you five minutes to come up with your big idea of, you know, who that target person is that you're um, striving to help. And that opportunity that you have or that big idea that you have to serve that niche market. Um, I'm trying to think of all the different words to kind of get it to click. Um, so, and I can go first just to help you guys um, with that. So for me, um, I definitely am um, somebody that is, um, you know, my big idea is serving stay-at-home moms or moms, ideally stay-at-home moms that do want to be present for their kids. Um, similar to the working moms, but ultimately they want to be a part of a community and they want to create something for themselves and also have that financial freedom to help contribute, be a contributor in the household. So that is really, um, my big idea and something that I am very passionate about with, um, helping other moms do. So, 
that's my big idea. And that is what gets me up every day and gets me excited. And um, also part of that big idea is stay at home moms a lot of times don't take care of themselves. They put everybody um, and moms in general, but really um, my um, big ideas is specifically stay at home moms. They take care of everybody but themselves. And a lot of times they don't even shower, you know, they just, you know, roll around in yoga pants all day. I'm just being real here. And sometimes they fall into depression, anxiety. I mean, I know I can find myself that way if I'm, if I don't watch myself. So that really is what I'm passionate about is helping other stay at home moms, not only put, um, get a part be a part of a community and help their family but also love themselves again and it's something i could talk about all day long because that's my big idea that is something that um you know i know um there's a need for and i know that beachbody can provide that solution so that's my big idea and beachbody is how i leverage that so i don't know that just i totally you know, I didn't even know I was going to share that, but there you go. <laughs> well, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, I feel like my target, I, I did work full time. And then when I stopped working a year and a half ago, that's when I gained the weight. Um, and it wasn't much, but you know, I mean, 10 pounds and nobody wants to gain even 10 pounds, but, um, and I found myself getting lazy. Um, you know, vegging out in front of the TV a lot. And so that's when I realized that I needed the change. And so I, I also like the idea of targeting stay at home moms or maybe moms that, like you said, that aren't taking care of themselves because I was in that same boat. I, and I still wear yoga pants every day, so don't judge me, but <laughs> <laughs> that I have to dress up for. So <laughs> Me it's too. like I work, work now when I, days, so don't worry about it. I know. Well, people actually, you know, when I walk out of my house with blue jeans on, they're like, Oh my God, you have another pair of pants that aren't yoga pants. I'm like, yeah, surprise. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I love the idea of targeting stay at home moms or, you know, just women in general that don't give themselves enough time. So that's so cool because as you start really diving into that, it's going to look different um, for each of us. And some of it can look the same too, but some of it can look different and it gets you excited because this is the people that are like your best friends that you have stuff you can talk about with them because you share a lot of similarities with each other and you can relate with them. So when you're posting on social media, you can really target those people and talk specifically to them and really just hone in on them because there's that quote and some of you have, I'm sure heard it, but it's, you can't, you can't help everybody. Um, you can really only help like, oh, and now I'm losing it. But you know, if you really try to help everybody, you'll end up helping nobody. So you really just need to focus on the people that you ideally want to help and target the people that you'll enjoy being around. You want to, um, you know, just make it a good experience for you and everyone else. Like, um, Amber was saying in the call last night there, you know, you need to be clear on who you want to do business with and who you don't want to do business with and be okay with that because this is your business. So, um, you know, know that you can be okay with being clear about that because you don't want to end up in a situation doing business, you know, and helping people that you really don't want to help in that, you know, I don't want to sound mean about that, but some people just don't click. So, um, there's that, but anyways, okay. So who wants to go next? Bite the bullet. <laughs> I'll go. Awesome. So when she was talking about it yesterday, um, I did listen to the first half of the call. I haven't finished all of it, 
So what I had kind of resonated with as soon as she said it was the work-life balance because that's where I feel like I kind of fit in. I have an older child that, that does go to school. I work full-time. My husband works full-time. So I feel like that's something that I have really been um, focused on without trying to focus on it. So I felt like that was definitely something that um, spoke to me specifically when she was talking about the big idea. I was thinking of you when she mentioned that too. Actually, you and Christina um, in California, she, you both um, have a lot of similarities when it comes to that. So I think that that is awesome. And that just shows that we're all different, you know, um, with our niche market. And a lot of us want to stay in the work field and we want to stay in our careers. This is something though that we really enjoy and we want to have as our own and it's an opportunity that we can offer other people. But that is your market that you serve is that working workforce that the the women that are moms that are working and then you can offer them this community and on top of that um, how did she word it to? She mentioned like a lot of the people that are moms that work don't make time for fitness and health. And so that is the opportunity that you provide them through that is that you help them make their health and fitness a priority in their already super busy lives. So who's next? I love it. I can go, and uh, mine is probably going to be a little bit scattered just because I feel like over the past couple of years, you know, that I've been doing this to over two years now, um, you know, my avatar has kind of changed, and you, it just evolves over the, you know, over time, and um, but definitely. I, I still work part time as a nurse, so I definitely the working um, mom, I would say. And um, but then again, somebody who wants to, you know, is is um, is serious about their health or wants to be healthy, wants to take care of their family, and. Um, I guess is kind of is health conscious, so to say. Um, somebody who is, I guess, ambitious at having something of their own and um, and still wanting to, you know, make a change and impact. Like cares about others and wants to um, impact other lives. Um, so that's that's kind of the focus right now. Um. When she was speaking on that call, I remember her mentioning, um, and I was just thinking because you're the healthy nurse too, but um, like that's just when I think of you now, I'm like the healthy nurse. Um, it's funny you say that because at work they tease me about it all the time. That's just like become my nickname or whatever, you know? It's like, but I, it's a good thing. It's so awesome because it's like your brand is your brand. And then I think of your kids and I do think of you as the healthy nurse, like you do keep the wholesome food. Um, and I remember, um, you know, when you were gifting food and you brought it to my house to give to her, I was like, gosh, this stuff is like organic meat and like good food. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was just like, that was just very um, thoughtful and, and nice. And then I was like, you know, just, I'm just thinking of um, when Trina was talking about um, one of her particular coaches, she spoke about that target of, you know, giving your kids whole foods instead of, you know, giving them processed foods and those sort of things. And that um, that's her brand is that she's um, all about, helping bridge that gap for the family and showing how this can be like a whole family thing, not just for the mom or the, the, or the, you know, the woman or the busy woman in the house. It can be something that the whole family is a part of and that you have, you can share figuring out, 
meals for kids, husband, everybody, and make it a lifestyle for everybody. And, you know, that's not um, everybody's niche and, and, you know, what was the word again, Kayhow? The um, big idea. The big idea. Big well, idea. I'm getting that. I'm like, I don't even know. The big idea keeps not being a big idea. I'm getting that. I got to write that down. But um, yeah, so I just think that um, I see a lot of that in you. Um, so I just thought as a third party, here I am sharing that. So thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Who's next? I'll go. <laughs> so mine has always been the same, my big idea, but I kind of feel like I tie another one into it, um, just with busy. I used to could say that I was a busy working mom of two kids and two jobs, but now I can't say that. I can only say one job, but I'm still busy, <laughs> which is everyone. But mine is prevention. And yeah, so yesterday I listened to the first part of the call, and I had my wheels turning because she kept talking about fun and joy and the reason, you know, people lose track of the fun because they're just all business trying to get to that goal. So I'm thinking like, how can I spin this? You know, prevention has always been my why and my reason to help, you know, want to help as many people as I can. Um, how can I spin that into it to be like something fun? So my wheels were turning about that and I still can't figure it out. Like I was thinking like some kind of like gambling, like don't like settle for the hand you're dealt or don't keep playing with the hand that you're dealt or something like that. But um, just like prevent, not settling for, you know, like if you're diagnosed with a disease or if they say that, you know, like you have some injury, then you, you, don't, you don't settle for that. You, there's another way to life than settling and taking pills every single day. So that's my big idea is to help shake the pills. <laughs> yeah. The word satisfy may come in. Like, don't be satisfied with the hand. Oh, yeah, that's it. a good one. That is good. Um, so, like, I'm just trying to think here. So it's like prevention for um the family in general like I'm just trying to help you like kind of like see the big whole thing of prevention because prevention can be very broad it can be prevention in advance or prevention once it happens and not instead of calling it prevention which is the pre-prevention it could be um you know, not accepting the hand you're dealt, or I don't know what the other word for that would be, but, you know, um, you know, trying to think of, is it preventing it before it happens, or being an overcomer and not settling for the hand you're dealt, and staying, you know, making that your reality, and being a fighter. And then thinking of, is it everybody in the world or is it mo busy moms or is it the whole family, you know? And then, I mean, you're, you're amazing with meal prep. Like you are the meal prep queen. You are a busy mom, like busy, you work, you can, you know how to get it done and make it a lifestyle. And you're so super consistent with that. So you know how to show people to be preventative beforehand so that they don't fall in, right. you know, like you know how to help people prevent diseases in the future by living a healthier lifestyle. Um, do you feel like you do it for the whole family? Or is it okay. more just women focused? Um. Well, I kind of feel like I do it for the whole, I mean, it's kind of like how Amber says you change a mom, you change a whole family. Like, I feel like, like I'm doing it for the whole family. Yeah. So you've noticed like your whole family is like taking on this whole lifestyle change and really impacted. At home. Yes. <laughs> That's good because it's, this is like awareness. So now, you know, like when you're, 
speaking to the world, you can continue speaking to them and then just really focus on those busy families that, and you know, like you said, when you change a mom, you change a family, but you're all about preventing in the future. And you do that through showing them how to properly eat and fuel their bodies um, and incorporate it into their busy lifestyle. So that, I think that's, that's awesome. That's an awesome big idea. And I think you're really narrowing it down because that's, the key is just trying to narrow it down. And sometimes it's hard in the beginning. And I know that she even mentioned that because in the beginning I wanted to help everybody because I was just getting my business off the ground. So I wanted to, you know, just get as many transformations as I could. And in the beginning, that's okay. Help your friends, help your family, help whoever wants your help. But as you grow, you really need to narrow it down. Um, and they, you know, they say, and I've experienced this, the people that get you to diamond will not be the same team that gets you to elite. And a lot of you that have been around with me for a long time can see that, that the people that get you to, because you, as you grow, you attract and narrow down your ideal, you know, tribe, your BFFs, your ideal people, your, your, your family. And that's what I love about this tribe is like, we're a family in here. And so I love that. So we all have our little, um, our little, um, big ideas. So Marilyn, Laura, I don't want to leave y'all out. So let's hear your big ideas. Well, um, I was thinking along the lines of, let's see, I shared it earlier with Kay Howe and Yadita, um, to reach exhausted and recovering mothers who need to love and nurture themselves. So what I picture is, um, instead of codependent, they can nurture each other in this group, this challenge area. And um, then I can handpick the people who have matured and come along and say from there, you would make a great coach and then they go out and they nurture. So it's, it's kind of like a, um, something contagious, getting that joy out there. It's healing and contagious at the same time. And I may have, I mean, I'm not saying um, when I say exhausted, that takes in across the whole gambit because I cannot tell you how many times I don't want to use the word burnt out, but I've been a mom for 18 years and burnt out is a very frequent, you know, word in my vocabulary. And so, you know, all I'm thinking about is the fact that these women are out there. They're, some of them are, you know, recovering from being a mom. They're stuck. They have no idea what to do now that the nest is empty. Others are recovering from the fact that my kids are now in high school and I'm not needed as much, you know, or the fact, you know, just, I just picture a community that where women can go to be women and reprogram. I love that. I love that because there is an absolute need for that. You know, um, once so many people, um, are so, you know, focused on their children their whole lives. And then as soon as their kids grow up, it's like, what do I do now? And, you know, it's a lot of women too feel isolated because sometimes, you know, and I'm just thinking in the future of some relationships like marriages, you know, you put in all this time with your kids and then yes. you grow up and, and you don't even know your spouse anymore and things like that happen and they're looking for communities so that they can plug into and just, um, and sometimes, you know, that's not the case, but that is what you see a lot nowadays. Um, unfortunately, you know, but, um, because it, it's hard, you know, to balance, you know, your kids with your spouse and all of that mixed in. And so I think there is definitely a need for that. And a lot of um, hurt goes into that because it's almost like you're letting go. And I mean, I know when they, you know, just me thinking in advance 
once my kids go to high school it's, and and then graduate, and I know Heather just had her, you know, her son went into high school this year. Um, and I know that that, for what I would feel like I would feel, I don't know if Heather felt this, but um, I just, I feel like there's this certain part of you that feels like, you know, sad, like I can't believe they're growing up and, you know, it's, it's a, just a different season in life. So um, like you Absolutely. said, it's scary. They don't need you as much anymore either. Yeah. They think they know everything. And Oh, well, you've been around him. Of course he knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a definite, um, there, that's a different target audience and a, and a lot of other women are just like that. So many out there that are looking for a community of people that get them, that understand them. So that's awesome. I love that. Marilyn, you're, I mean, you are like honed in on it. So, I mean, I see that you see that vision so clearly. It's so awesome. Love that. So Laura, are you there? You on chat? Oh, hey, Laura. Hey. Um, well, I kind of want to piggyback on everybody. <laughs> um, well, Got to target it down. Yeah. And uh, really, for me, it's the community. And I've just been thinking about what it's done for me in the last three years. Um, it's brought me closer to friends that I didn't have before. And it actually brought me some closure with the friendship that I didn't get before and now we talk on the phone weekly so that's I know that there are other women other people out there that need that they need somebody that can say hey how you've been you know I haven't seen you in a while what have you been doing and just kind of reaching out and making sure that they are you know living up to what they could be doing and not just living the same old same old life but doing something amazing with their life that's so awesome. community yeah definitely um and that's powerful and i think community is one of the biggest pieces in what we offer and um what I love about what we do so much and also you know you being such an amazing mom and um of little ones like you have little ones too you know so um you know you're not at the high school level or you know the elementary school level where right now I have I don't have preschoolers anymore um I'm at the elementary in, um, in my life. So, you know, you're still in the, like the preschool and um, the younger children, you know, um, and being um, a mom of, you know, girls and, and, you know, just like thinking of those sort of as, like your, your niche and your focus um, and being a part of a community of other women just like that. And that's who, um, you want to speak to when you're when you're talking when you're sharing when you know you're posting your workout of the day or your you know part of your workout your workout you share on top of that exactly um how, what boy that can feel for that particular person that ideal person, that busy mom that's working that stay-at-home mom of elementary school kids that feels like she wants to, you know, have more of a community and still have something else to call her own. Someone that has that missing void of the high, you know, now her children are graduating or in high school or the one that is busy at home with, with babies and feels like she doesn't even, you know, she has no time to even think because she's always having to wipe a, a butt. And <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I said that I went there, but you know, like it, I mean, it's real life, right? <laughs> it's just different seasons. And that's, you know, there's people out there that are looking for, you know, I, 
I mean, I remember when I was in the season, you were in Laura and I went to work and I was like, I need to go potty. And they were like, potty, really? Did you just say that? And I was like, oh, I'm so, <laughs> I'm used to being around babies. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, that's definitely awesome. Um, and Christina, you hopped in when we were sharing our big ideas. So um, the big idea is your, I, I don't know if you listened to the National Wake Up Call, we don't have a ton of time, but the big idea is your target audience, like exactly who you want to speak to and um, that ideal person, like that big idea of, um, you know, what, what, Trina Gray shared was, you know, she was a fitness professional and working 20 hours a week, working out really hard. And that's not realistic for people to do long term. So this is an opportunity that can fulfill that, that need. So without, um, you know, solely pushing a product on somebody, what is your big idea that you can serve to a specific audience and community? So, like, I'm super busy, and when I talk to people, that's, like, the biggest thing I lead with. So, the majority of my challengers or my coaches have that I have right now use the excuse of, I don't have time. I can't fit it in. And I swear on sweet little baby Jesus that if I can do it anybody can do it like this is no joke i have two full-time jobs two full-time kids and a crazy clumsy husband like i can totally if i can do it anybody can do it and that's my target audience i want that busy mom i want that excuse after excuse time management making it work mom or you know college student or grandma or you know even dads it doesn't matter to me you're gonna tell me you don't have time and i'm gonna prove you wrong and that is what you should talk about every time you're posting like you address yeah. the objection head on every time so before they even have time to share that with you they already know what you're gonna say because you're already sharing it all the time like you know i i'm so busy so don't give me the time excuse and when you're working out i don't have time but i do it anyways i make the choice and you just you know share that share how you feel how you don't want to do it but you do it and i know you that's do right and that way though you're speaking to them you're speaking to them and then they don't even give you the excuse when it happens like when you present the and share with them if you've already addressed the excuse over and over again head on with that ideal person your ideal person they're they're not even going to give you an, that excuse right so that that is awesome and um the last you know, there's less than a minute so i really don't have time to do anything else here um but laura if you want we could take a quick selfie i know you're hiding in there um <laughs> I, but real quickly maybe we can do one before it cuts off on us um so i'll try to take one say cheese <laughs> it's always fun all right <laughs> yay so i'll share that in Finally. the Finally, Thanks I even the selfies. Yeah. Yay. And you're driving. Be careful. It's a dirt road. It's fine. Oh, oh those are. <gasps> oh, I just love you. Chris. Blow down. You guys are crazy. I'm totally fine. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> oh, man. Man, doesn't she sound like me? <laughs> I'm just thinking <laughs> what do you mean? Saturday, the one day that I was driving on. Um, on um 85 with yadita and janet and i forget who else is in the car and i was like Don't was i with you going yeah i totally uh, remember that thank that god there's nobody else on the road <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the last saturday was it 
No, it was one like a oh, because you did the same thing on Super Saturday too. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was the running joke like you you do have a gas cap right <laughs> well, i'm always like but did you die okay exactly. so I'm